And joining us now is Cheryl Atkinson, Emmy Award-winning journalist. She is the host of Full Measure with Cheryl Atkinson. You could uh, watch that on Sunday. Check your local listings. And she's also, of course, the author of Stonewalled. Hello, Cheryl. Hi, Steve. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. All right, first of all, I want to talk to you a little bit. I know you on your show coming up this weekend, uh, you have a, a, a piece on, on, on Donald Trump and how all the experts kind of got it so wrong. Before you talk about that, um, I don't know, is this... Are we going to look back? I hope not. God forbid that, that this uh, white powder letter, threatening letter sent to Trump's son warning his family. I mean, is this a, a new, uh, you know, a new dimension to this whole thing now? I guess. I mean, I think it's to be expected the way the rhetoric is dialed up. Any crazy nut could send any candidate on either side uh, white powder and a threatening note. So I, I hope it just sort of fades away as a nutcase that was really not going to be able to do anything meaningful. I wonder if the media, though, is going to start uh, debating whether or not Donald Trump is responsible for the letter because he ticked off the person, just like he was responsible for the guy who rushed the stage in Ohio, and he was responsible for the organized violence of the left in Cleveland. I mean, it would, it would stand to reason that that logic would lead you to say, well, you know, I'm sorry, Chicago, uh, that, uh, hey, you know, um, Donald Trump uh, brought this on himself. Well, I have noticed how... Um when anything happens involving Trump, he's blamed for anything bad. But if similar things, playing my substitution game, were to happen with another candidate, I don't think they'd be blamed the same way. When he, everybody's saying he warned of riots. And in fact, if I said I was worried about a riot coming up because of some circumstance, it certainly doesn't mean I think that I was, would be causing the riot, but that's how... Right. You're not calling for it. it. Right. You didn't say people <laughs> should riot. Yeah. Well, that's that. So we're looking at the old double standard, right? Yes. But I, I would say it's been interesting to observe from someone in the media how the media coverage has gone. And yet, um, as I wrote in a blog the other day, everything like this that happens and the coverage that comes out of it to the extent that it is sometimes not fair seems to work in his favor because that's his base support to begin with. So. The people who like Trump see through that sort of coverage, and I don't. It doesn't seem to hurt him or stick with him with his core supporters. Yeah, no. So, so it does work in his favor. But you're right. I mean, if someone rushed Hillary's stage, CNN wouldn't be sitting down with him and saying, you know, but don't, but don't you think you were a little, little bit too overboard? I mean, it was crazy to watch that interview. If someone rushed a stage of Hillary Clinton, and especially if that person were then found to be a Donald Trump supporter, oh, he would be blamed for right, inciting right, that. Right. So you just can't win, I guess, if you're not on the media's right side. Absolutely. All right. So talk about the piece on, uh, on, on your show uh, regarding Trump and, and everybody who's uh, gotten it wrong so far. We're just taking a look back um, with Howie Kurtz, and we spoke to him and looked at some of the older clips from people back starting last summer who said almost unequivocally that he could not make it was not long for the campaign would only last a few weeks a few months at the most and we just kind of dig into how everybody could be so wrong this is probably the wrongest that the most people have been about any candidacy yeah no i i couldn't agree with you more i mean uh, people don't know what to do and now how do you feel about the uh every day now the organized efforts in eric erickson and then bill crystal and everybody to to try to come up with an alternate ticket well, it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. I'm not a political analyst, but it's it's fascinating. I don't know where how it ends because there hasn't been a path laid before with uh, this type of thing going on. So I, I really don't know what's going what would happen if they ended up going with another candidate if Trump had the majority or at least was close to the majority. Who, who knows? It is certainly possible. You also have a story coming up on Full Measure uh, this weekend about Cubans coming in through the Mexican border. What's going on? We, we're continuing our border coverage. We're doing quite a bit of that. I was down on the Arizona border, but I got a tip that Cubans are flooding across the Mexican border and checked it out. And lo and behold, yes, we had maybe on a normal year in the past few years, you'd have 7,000 Cubans come into the U.S. They have a special status. If they get one dry foot on U.S. soil, they get to go ahead of all of the refugees. They don't have to make an individual case. Boom, they are in, you know, federal benefits fast track to legal status and so on. Well, normally 7,000 come across the last few years, but we had 40,000 last year, most wow. of them coming through Laredo, Texas. We had, um, we've already had 25,000 the first half of this fiscal year, so we're on track to beat that this year. 
And we spoke to a Democratic congressman who said the administration was trying to keep this quiet. It, it was happening a lot of it in his district. And the only way he knew about it was uh, he, he just heard about it and he couldn't get answers from the Obama administration. And it turns out it, this is a really big issue. Yeah, no, absolutely. We look forward to that. Also, you wrote a piece, uh, this goes back to what you were talking about, the media. Uh, who, who else? You wrote a piece, uh, Eight Trump Enemies Helping Him Succeed. Um, who, uh, who else besides the media, which it's backfiring on them, but who else? Well, I, I think entities, one of them was the Chicago protesters, one of them was the Pope, one of them was Mitt Romney. You know, everyone who's come forward trying to do damage to, Mitt, to uh, Donald Trump, I've specifically said in the back of my mind, not that I'm a political expert, I'm just an ordinary observer, but I've said in the back of my mind with each of those developments, they don't understand if they're really against him, that how much they're helping right, him. And right. I think that's turned out to be the case. And I still don't think they understand. When you watch uh, sort of establishment Republicans go from endorsing one candidate to the other, they don't seem to notice that they're kind of killing out those candidates one by one with their endorsements <laughs> and helping Trump. So, no, that's absolutely you know, true. It's interesting to watch. That's absolutely true. Okay, thank you very much, Cheryl. Thanks, Steve.